guys, it's Steph here. This is The Novelty Corner and welcome back to my channel. This is a Books Beside My Bed video, which for anyone who is new here is a video I film every week where I wrap up the last seven days worth of reading. If you are very familiar with the series, welcome back. This is my reading week from the 28th until the 3rd of April. I read seven books this week, a total of 2,223 pages and my yearly reading total is 115 books. This was an interesting week for me because I found some of my limits in the taboo sort of darkish romance genre, which is great. I think finding your limits is is perfect. It helps direct and guide what you want to read. I also participated in a buddy read, which is currently ongoing on my phone as I am filming this. So yes, because we, we had a lot of thoughts. I'll talk about them in a little bit. The first book that I read this week was The Doctor by Nikki Sloan, which is book one in the Nashville Neighbours series. I ended up giving this four out of five stars. I had read The Architect, which is the third book, and I sort of skipped to that third book. And then I decided to go back and read the first two books. I really liked The Doctor. It is a taboo age gap romance between Cassidy and her ex-boyfriend's father, who is a doctor, and his name is Greg. We open the story with Cassidy really com contemplating her relationship with Preston. They're both in college and they've been together since high school, but the relationship isn't working. And Preston thinks it's great because he knows he can call her up and they'll have sex and that's totally fine. But Cassidy is beginning to see that they're no longer the same best friends that they were to begin with. And there's a whole backstory about why Preston sort of is the way he is, but he's a bit of an idiot, to be blunt. Cassidy's always had a crush on Preston's father, but never really considered acting on it. And then the two have a moment after she breaks up with Preston. And it's about how they pursue their relationship, how they navigate the social stigma around an age gap, romance as well as it also being her ex-boyfriend's father and it was just really fun. I really liked both Cassidy and Greg. I thought they were fantastic characters. The writing was really smooth and easy to read. It was a great Nikki Sloan book. Then I read The Pool Boy by Nikki Sloan because I figured I might as well just read the second book in the National Neighbours series and this one I liked a little bit less. I ended up giving it three out of five stars and this is what I was talking about before when I said I found some of my limits. So it is another age gap romance. This one is an older woman romance which is totally fine. I really like those and it is about Erica who is a music manager and she has currently gone through a very messy divorce and she and her ex-partner barely speak at the moment. And then she has this moment with her poor boy, Troy. And it's a very steamy scene and it's great. My issue with this book is not the age gap and it's not the older woman, because like I said, I actually really like those. And I read another older woman romance later in the week that I absolutely loved. My two issues with this book were one, that Troy was the son of her best friend, which that element was a little bit ick for me, but you know, totally fine for anyone. But also the thing that really threw me was the fact that she discovered that Troy was a really fantastic musician. And so she decides to get him to audition for this competition to open a really big show in Nashville. And along the way, she is sort of in a business position of power. So it really shifted the dynamics. And it's not that Troy is submissive or that Troy was in any way on the back foot in it. He's quite a confident person but the whole thing just felt really uncomfortable for me so a lot of the times it's just a level of comfort for me so I think it was one the, the manager and client dynamic and also the best friend's son issue which is weird because there's not very many things in reading that actually make me super uncomfortable but this is one of them so that was interesting to read but it was like the rest of the series, very well told. And I did like the characters. I really liked Troy. I thought he was great. And I liked that we got to see some of the other characters who are in the rest of the series as well. Then I read Tangle of Need by Nalini Singh. This is book 11 in the Psy Changeling series and is part of the read along that I'm doing as well as the series on my channel. This book is an interesting one to talk about and I'm gonna have a full separate video on this particular book. The reason I say it's interesting is because there is a new couple that we're introduced to in this book and that's Riaz and Adria and they're both snow dancer wolves but they actually only make up about a third of the story and it's not a short book. We get a lot more about Hawk and Sienna which is fantastic because it continues the story from the last book and then a lot of the rest of the book is world building. So this book is very much more urban fantasy than strictly paranormal romance because there is a romance and there is a happily ever after or a happy for now at the end of this book. But yeah, it's very much more about moving the side changing world forward than it is about the specific romance. So I'm going to have to rethink how I film 
my separate video on this book because I can't do it the same way that I've been doing all the others. But I did give it four out of five stars again and I appreciated Adria and Riez's story much more in this, on this reread than I remember on my first read. Then I read the next two books in Ava Lee's Union of the Rakes series. So the second book in the series is Would I Lie to the Duke? This is about Jessica McGale who is a young woman who lives with her two sisters. They've lost their parents in the previous year and they've tried to keep the family business, a soap making business afloat and then they've had a fire that has destroyed some of their production equipment. Desperate to keep this family business going they all take on extra jobs and Jessica ends up becoming a companion for a very wealthy woman who needs her to travel to the city for a period of time on her own and while Jessica is there she decides to take advantage of this and try and source some funding for her family's company. This leads her to crossing paths with the Duke of Rotherbury, Noel, who we met in the first book. She ends up somehow talking her way into an investment bazaar that's being held and Noel is one of the people who is there and she meets a whole stack of other people including the main female character for the next book. There they're all, they're all evaluating potential business opportunities and she has to find subtle ways to drop hints about Miguel and Miguel's soap. And along the way she falls in love with Noel and he falls in love with her. This book is really fantastic because Jessica is very dominant in the bedroom and you wouldn't expect a character like Noel to accept that but he does and it's fantastic. I really enjoyed it but I ended up giving this one about four out of five stars. And then the third book is Waiting for a Scott Like You and I have to say I think this is my favourite of the series. It was just so fun. We follow Major Duncan McCameron who is one of the Union of the Rake members and he is a former soldier. He's a second son so he, his responsibilities are not as great as his brother and he's come back from war. He's a very regimented sort of guy and he is a bit of a, at a bit of a loss. He doesn't really know what he's got, what he's doing anymore. And he is asked to accompany Beatrice, the Dowager Countess of Farris, on a trip to an event that she's planning on attending, which is hilarious when you find out what it is. Beatrice is fantastic. She was a character we met in the second book. She is loving life now that her husband has passed away, which sounds horrible, but he doesn't sound like the greatest husband. And she is reveling in the freedom that she has and so she's taking this road trip and McCameron comes along and he tries to impose order on her trip but she just stops anywhere she wants to and she enjoys meeting new people and investigating these towns that they're passing along the way so it's very much a road trip story and like any good road trip story everything that could possibly go wrong does and it's just great. My favourite parts were any time that she just took particular delight in upsetting McCameron's best laid plans because you could just tell he was getting very frustrated and she was delighting in it. It was so fun. This is an older woman romance. I absolutely adored this one because Beatrice was just this bright vibrant character who wanted to live life to the fullest and I was all here for it. So this was a five star read for me this week. Then we come to my one star read for the week and this was my buddy read. So I was buddy reading this with Heather, Katie, Naima, Tracy and Megan and I will leave their channels or Instagram pages linked down below and my phone is buzzing because they're still talking and I'm desperate to get back to that conversation. We read The Initiation by Nikki Sloan. Now I was fully expecting to delight in this book because I know how well loved and how popular it is on booktube particularly on romance tube and I hated this book. Sorry I suppose hate is a too strong a word. I was very very uncomfortable and I did not like this story. It's probably for all the reasons that people go yeah it's, it's fiction and that's fine and I totally get that because I can understand implicitly why people like this book because theoretically I should have liked it too. So this is the story of Marist who is forced into a relationship basically by blackmail with Royce Hale who is the heir to a big banking corporation. He has an absolutely horrible father who dictates everything in his life as well as everything around him. But Royce is not a particularly nice person himself and he does not stand up for himself, he does not stand up for Marist and he does not stand up for anyone. So he doesn't get a pass here. Marist agrees to this engagement arrangement because she's trying to save her family from financial ruin because they've basically 
spent all of their money. She strikes this deal with McAllister, who is Royce's father. And in doing so, she has to change everything that she is. She has to change her appearance. She has to change her demeanor. She has to learn all about the board members from the family company. And she needs to be interviewed by them and get their approval before she can even be considered as a potential fiance for Royce. And meanwhile, Royce is trying to get elected to the board. So we kept getting told through this whole thing that in order for Royce to become a board member, he has to pass an initiation ceremony and that Marist is involved in this. So I'm going to put a spoiler tag on the screen because I think you need to be aware of them if you're going into this book. If you like surprises, just skip to where the spoilers tag is not on the screen. Or actually, potentially just skip to the next book because I'm just going to talk spoilers for the rest of the initiation. The initiation ceremony is essentially that Royce has to have sex with Marist in front of the rest of the board and that they have to participate in some way. So they're not actually allowed to have sex with her, but they can touch her with their hands and mouths. And the whole scene is just very cringy and gross. And while it's cringy and gross, I can get over that in a book, usually, because I've, I've read all sorts of weird things in erotic romance books. So like that part, it's weird and creepy, but that's fine. Like we, we can get, we can get beyond that. The part that I can't forgive is how much of an asshole Royce is for a start and how much of an asshole his father is because basically Marist is smart enough to negotiate a way for McAllister to not be involved in this initiation ceremony and of course that sets her right in his sights because whatever he wants he gets which sets the scene for the end of the book where he basically buys Marist off Royce. So this book ends on a cliffhanger and you're supposed to want to keep reading and all I wanted to do was throw my Kindle across the room and bleach my brain because the whole thing is just disgusting. And I know it's fantasy, I know it's a book and everyone's allowed to have their own opinions. No, no, I'm done. So it's nothing against Nikki Sloan because I've read some of her books, I really like them. You've heard me talk about two others in this video, one of which was not my necessary cup of tea, but and one that was, and another book that I read the week before that I really enjoyed. So it's not anything about Nikki Sloan's writing, but the content of this book just, it stressed me out, it made me feel gross, and I didn't like it. So that is my one star read. I will probably not continue the series. I know the group that I've buddy read it with is consider, some of them are considering continuing the series just to see what happens and to hopefully have the female characters rise up and take back some power, which would be great if, it, if the series does that fantastic more power to it. I just don't know if I can stomach it. So I will not be continuing but I will gladly listen to their discussions around the book and have spoilers and whatnot. If you think you can convince me to continue the series feel free to let me know down below. And then because I needed to read something steamy that was not going to hurt my brain I ended up picking up one of my other read digital challenge books which was The Nine Inch Difference by Cleo Peachy. Petchy? I'm not sure how to say her name. I'm really sorry. I'll put it up on the screen. I ended up giving this one a four out of five stars. This one I really liked. This is a menage story with BDSM elements and it's also a sci-fi romance but it's one that's sort of set and based on Earth and just in the future with technology. In this book we have Jolene Harper who is fed up with men. Her last relationship has broken down and she's had it with real men. So she decides that she doesn't want a new boyfriend. She wants a lifestyle companion which is essentially an android designed to do whatever its owner wants. That also includes sex. And she particularly wants one that can sexually dominate her. That's her kink, that's what she wants. So she goes to this dealership and she's looking around, she's not finding anything that she wants and then she ends up talking to Benedict who she mistakenly takes as one of the lifestyle companions when in fact he's actually one of the founding partners of this company. And not wanting to embarrass her when he realizes her mistake, Benedict sort of talks to her and agrees to this trial at her house. And he takes one of their newer models of life lifestyle companions to her house and continues to pretend that he is not human, that he is a sales bot. And they have some very steamy scenes. And eventually Jolene realizes that he's human and keeps pretending that he's not and then he realizes that she knows and the whole thing was just delightfully fun and entertaining and my favorite character was Eason who is the android character in this story who is meant to be a military android but has developed its own personality and he's wonderful I loved him so 
I really liked this one. This was a nice palette cleanser for the end of the week and I'm glad that I read it because I really needed it after the initiation. So those are all the books that I read this week. I had a mostly enjoyable reading week and I'm sorry for my rant. I will leave a link to everyone I have mentioned down below as well as all of the books I have mentioned. Don't forget you can use the timestamps to jump backwards and forwards to all of the book titles if you missed anything. In the comments you can let me know if you have read any of these books or if you're planning on reading them or if you are planning on convincing me to continue the Filthy Rich Americans series by Nikki Sloan. Otherwise feel free to let me know something else you have enjoyed this week. I hope that wherever you are in the world you are staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.